Our hearts beat to the city streets. We begin to feel the fire. We rise like tall buildings as the chemicals they take us higher. The night's young and it's just begun. As she puts her hand in mine. Now the morning is the afternoon. We lay awake in bed. On this day, the church recalls the entrance of Christ, the Lord, into Jerusalem to accomplish his Paschal mystery. We acclaim Jesus as our victorious King, but we wave our palms. To commemorate the Lord's entry into Jerusalem, we will have a solemn entrance into the church, waving our palms and singing Hosanna. Let us get it together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginnings of the Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by pangs and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginnings of the celebrations of Lord's Passover mystery of his passion and resurrection. But it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered the city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all favor and devotion, let us uh, commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that, being met by his breast particles of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Lift up your arms and lips. Let us pray. O oh, my dear ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing. That we who follow Christ, the King of exaltation, in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem to Him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When they draw near to Jerusalem, to Bethlehem and the Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter, if you will find a cloth tied, and which 
no one has ever said. From time to eat and bring it. If anyone said to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has a need of it. They will send it back here immediately. And, when, and they went away and found a cloth tied at the door out in the open street. And they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, What are you doing? Untying the cord. And they told them what Jesus had said. And they let them go. And they brought the cord of Jesus to Jesus and threw their garments on it. And he sat upon it. And many spread their garments on the ground, and others spread and leaf by the branches which they had cut from the fields. And those who went before, and those who followed, and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. The good news of Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, don't worry. If you feel that the holy water not reach to you, maybe after the mass, come to me again in front of the church here. Without the holy, without the holy water, is still valid because the welcoming of Christ is not through this lip, but through the heart that you practice. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who were acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
of very costly ointments, pure now. She broke the jar and poured the ointment on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, Why is this waste of ointment? Ointment like this could have been sold for over 300 denarius and the money given to the poor. And they were angry with her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why are you upsetting her? What she has done for me is one of the great good works. Would you have the poor with you always? And you can be kind to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what was in her power to do. She has anointed my body before it for its burial. I tell you solemnly, wherever throughout the whole world the good news is proclaimed, what she has done to well be taught also in remembrance of her. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, approached the chief priests with an offer to hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted to hear it and promised to give him money. And he looked for a way of betraying him when the opportunity should occur. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him and say to the owner of the house of which he enters. The master said, Where is my dinner room in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room of furniture with cultures. All prepared, made the preparation for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he arrived with the twelve, and while they were at table eating, Jesus said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me, one of you eating with me. They were distressed and asked, one after another, Not I, surely. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping into the same dish with me. Yes, the Son of Man is going to his fate. As the scriptures said, he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. And as they were eating, he took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned to thanks, he gave it to them and all drank from it. And he said to them, It is my blood, the blood of this covenant, which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After psalms had been sung, they left for the mountain of olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith. For the scripture says, I shall strengthen the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. However, after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said, Even if all lose faith, I will not. And Jesus said to him, I tell you solemnly, this day, this very night, before the good cross of Christ, you will have dishonored me three times. But she repeated still more earnestly, If I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And they all said the same. They came to a small estate called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Stay here while I pray. Then he took Peter and James and John with him, and a sudden fear came on over him, and great distress. And he said to them, my soul is sorrowful to the pale point of death. Wait here and keep away. 
and going on a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Let this come away from me. But let it be as you, not I, would have it. He came back and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Had you not to be strained to keep awake for one hour? You should be awake and pray not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came back and found them sleeping. The eyes were so heavy, and they could find no answer for him. He came back a third time and said to them, You can sleep on to now and take your rest. It is all over. The hour has come. Now the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us go. My betrayer is close at hand already. Even while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came out with a number of men, armed with swords and clubs, sent by the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the traitor had arranged a signal with him, with them. He had said, The one I kiss, he is the man. Take him in charge and see he is well guarded when you lead him away. So when the traitor came, he went straight up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The other seized him and took him in charge. Then one of the bystanders drew his sword and struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Then Jesus spoke. Am I not grieved that you hated to set out to capture me with sword and cross? I will amount your teaching in the temple day after day, and you never let hands on me. But this is the scriptures. And they all deserted him and ran away. A young man who followed him had nothing on but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the cloth in their hands and ran away naked. They led Jesus off to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes assembled there. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the high priest's palace and was sitting with the attendants, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus on which they might have passed the death sentence, but they could not find any. Several indeed brought false evidence against him, but their evidence was conflicting. Some stood up and submitted this false evidence against him. Even on this point, the evidence was conflicting. The high priest then stood up before the whole assembly and put this question to Jesus. Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence this men are bringing against you? But he was silent and made no answer at all. The high priest put a second question to him. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the cross of hell. The high priest tore his robes and said, What need of witnesses have we now? You heard the blasphemy. Where is your finding? And they all gave their verdict. He deserved to die. Some of them started spitting at him and blindfolding him began hitting him with the fists and shouting, Play the prophets! And the attendants raised blows on him. While Peter was down below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's servant girls came up. She saw Peter warming himself there, stared at him and said, You too were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know. 
I do not understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. The servant girl saw him and again started telling the bystanders, This fellow is one of them. But he again denied it. A little later, the bystanders themselves said to Peter, You are one of them for sure. Why, you're again a name. But he started calling curses on himself and swearing, I do not know the man you speak of. At that moment, the cock crew for the second time, and Peter re recalled how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. And he burst into tears. First thing in the morning, the chief priests, together with the elders and scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin, had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered. It is you who say it. And the chief priests brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowd went up and began to ask Pilate for a customary favor, Pilate answered, him, answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. The Pilate spoke again. But in that case, what am I to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called the whole cohort together. They dressed him up in purple, twisted some horns into a crown, and put it on him. And they began saluting him. They struck his head with a reed and spat on him. And they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his old clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shed out his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was, a, it was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. The passerbys cheered at him. They shook their heads and said, The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now for us to see it and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This means, My God, my God, why have you 
deserted me. When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Someone ran and sought out sponge and vinegar and put it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. All knew.
Just take whatever in front of you. Just take one. Make clear? Make sense? Why? Because what you take is given by God. It's not you choose. Maybe you choose something, it's not given by God. So just take whatever you have. And then you take it too long. Never mind, bring home and cut it into two and offer another one to add us. If you feel that this one not nice, okay, you do decorations. Make it some uh, creative way. Like the Filipino in uh, and even though in Rome also they do more decorations way for the least that they welcome Jesus. So those preparing to be received into full communion with the church. But when we come to the celebration of Easter, we knew in mind and heart. We pray to the Lord. For all who must bear the cross each day, particularly parents of sick children, learning something for thee.
Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Just the name. 